Are you feeling down, rejected, dejected, or even denied? Does it look as though all your efforts have been going down the drain? As though you're pouring water into a basket? Have you been constantly pressured about nothing good happening in your life? Have your friends began to slowly turn away from you because you don't seem to get anything right? Do you feel as though you're being oppressed and your inner abilities much suppressed? Do you hear of miracles and the supernatural but it seems as though the doors of heaven are closed against you? Do you think it's time to give in to pressure and give up? What is that issue? What is that big mountain? Hey, I've got a great message for you. God says he's seen all your efforts. He's seen your frustrations and something big is about to happen to you. Now this will not only keep you in awe, but silence the voice of mockery around you. It is first important to note that the feelings of pain, dejection, frustration, anger, and so on is not from God. It's never God's plan to have his children go through difficult moments. However, when or where you go through those periods, you can be sure that God has a bigger and better plan for you. He said, for he knows the thoughts he has towards you, thoughts of good and not evil, to give you an expected end. Have men used their words to talk down your faith? Don't feel pressured or in a haste at men's word. If one is not careful and follows the dictates of men, he would run faster than God. A pastor once said it's much better to be slower than God to be faster than him. Take Job in the Bible for instance. Even after Job lost everything and his friends and wife told him to curse God and die, Job did not. He rather chose to hold on to his faith in God understanding that men are limited by what they see and know. So really, what do they know? Are you going to base your success or failure on what they see and are currently talking about? God is releasing a word of assurance to you that a big miracle is coming to you. The question is, do you believe it? What looks like a shame now could be the instrument of upliftment that God needs. Oh yes! So I remember the story of a man who had been serving in a company for quite some years. After a while, an incident of miscalculation of funds happened in the company, in his department, and this man was told to refund millions of dollars that he did not take to the company since he was heading the department. Now this in itself looks like a ploy of the enemy to waste all his effort in the company. However. God caused this situation to pave way for the man to not only be apologized to, but compensated, which eventually led to the start of his very own business. How God causes the foolish things of this world to make sense is amazing. How am I sure that something big and miraculous is about to happen to you? What makes me so sure of that? Well, I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The night is usually associated with gloominess, stagnation, unfruitfulness, and so on. However, the Word of God gives us an assurance that no matter how long and dark a night might be, day would always come, and it's a night that we should expectantly look forward to. It signifies light. It signifies life. It signifies joy. It signifies a clean sheet. It assures me that what you're going through now is not permanent. It's just a phase and it will pass because God will shine his light. The man by the pool of Bethsaida had been there for 38 years and one would have thought his case was hopeless and nothing good could come out of it. However, we see the reverse happen when it's time for his light to shine. So no matter what you're going through, your light will shine. The Bible says that God causes all things, God causes all things to work together for good to them that love God. The question is, do you love God? Do you believe in his ability to make good out of the most terrible events? Do you believe that a seemingly hopeless happening can be turned to work in your favor? Well, God says it, and I believe it. God didn't say that he would not allow any mishap or wrongdoings to happen, because man is a product of his choices. So at times, we could make certain choices that would cause a mishap for us. However, God promises that in the face of that misfortune, he would cause all that to work together for your good. So do you remember the wedding at Cana? How should it be heard that wine finished during the marriage ceremony? 
It could have been a source of embarrassment for the couples or their families. However, because God was there, he caused that situation to be a wonder for them. Such that the people testified that the wine being brought towards the end of the party was sweeter than any wine served at the beginning. Such a wonder. Yes, in the same way that God can cause that rape incident, that demotion, that retrenchment to work together for your good. Despite all that you might seem to be going through, the truth remains that God does not forget his own and he will always come through for you even in the face of contrary situations. God is not forgetful, neither is he oblivious of present situations and circumstances. He will surely help the helpless and he will be a source of comfort to those who are in sorrow and grief. And the most important thing is when he wants to do this, he is all able. A constant character of God is how he always turns situations and things around for the good of his people. And this is what the book of Romans tells us. It says, when men say there's a casting down, God says something. Do you know what it is? He says there is a lifting up. There are many situations in which we need to lean on God's side to hear what he has to say. Men would always say what they see, and really, it's no fault of theirs. It's just saying the truth about what they see. You should, however, understand that those things you see now are temporal, but those things you can see through the eyes of the Spirit are permanent. I can imagine the issue of Abraham and Sarah. God began to tell Abraham that he would be the father of many nations a long time before he became a hundred years old. Yet years after, not even a single child. Somewhere in my mind, it feels like if I was Abraham, I would have told God to at least make me the father of one child before thinking of a nation. But the truth is, when God makes a promise, he keeps his word. When God wants to bless you with a mouth-watering miracle, he doesn't need too many things. He does not need much impute from man. When God blesses, he does not need any permission from anybody. Man could be subjects of approval or disapproval, but when a man wants to help you, he could need commendation or validation. But when God wants to bless you, he doesn't need permission from anyone. In fact, he does not even need your permission to bless you. This is a part of his almightiness. What's yours is yours. Thus, have you been feeling unnecessarily pressured about one thing or the other? Remember that your help comes from heaven and not from any man. So when one door closes, God opens another door. God doesn't need validation from anyone. The question is, do you believe? Do you remember the feeding of the 5,000 with the five loaves of bread and two fishes? God used the meal of a young boy to feed thousands of men, and God can use the impossibility to bring out a possibility. I remember a poem I used to recite in school back then, homeless but not hopeless. Now, keep your hopes high. A miracle is coming soon. And when it is God, it has to be big. When God says big, he means big. We are talking mind-blowing. We are talking jaw-breaking. Someone once said, and I quote, If the plans of God for you don't blow your mind, then it's not God. If it's God, then it has to exceed your expectations. So when God says that you should expect that something big is about to happen, then you should expect it to be nothing less than that. He is not a man that he should lie or the son of man to change his words. It means that you can trust what he said. So expect your miracle. God bless you.